to my channel. In today's video, we're gonna be covering exactly how I stay lean all year round whilst living a normal life, going out for drinks, going out with my friends, going out to restaurants, all of that kind of stuff. But before we get into this video, please make sure that you like this video and subscribe to my channel. If you like this video, then be sure to stick around. So one of my biggest loves, and if you follow me on Instagram, then you'll know, is cooking. I think that cooking all of my own meals, I'd say like probably like five, six days a week, helps me so much in terms of maintaining a lean physique because cooking your own food allows you to know exactly what is going in it. Yes, ready meals are okay every now and again, but you don't know what's in it and it probably has loads of preservatives in it. And most importantly, they are so expensive. So if you are at that place where you're trying to kind of maintain how you look and you're not cooking enough, definitely look at trying to cook more for yourself. I would suggest like choosing at least kind of like two, three recipes a week that you like and incorporate them into your diet because it's also gonna give you a varied amount of food and it's gonna make your diet interesting. So you're gonna to wanna to stick to it and you're gonna to wanna to eat that good food. Whereas if you're trying to just eat plain boring meals, you're not gonna to stick to it and you're probably just gonna have loads of snacks that you crave because you're not getting it from your foods. So one of the things that I've been loving recently are meals from HelloFresh. They are delivered straight to your door and they do rapid meals as well, which are done in under 20 minutes. So it's super convenient if you're someone like myself who is super busy, doesn't have time to go to the supermarket, but still wants to eat good nutritious meals. Today for lunch, I'm actually gonna be cooking this chicken and pepper pizza bowl. This looks so good and it's made in just under 20 minutes. I actually made this one yesterday. This was a cheesy Mexican style beef hash. I made it with Kieran and we were both <laughs> like obsessed with it. It was so good. So yeah, if you're looking for like easy meals, then HelloFresh is definitely such a great option. And like I said, you know exactly what goes in these meals because they give you all of the products down the side and it's all fresh ingredients as well. So you know, it's just full of the good stuff. You can also order for like two, three or four people. So if you are in a family and you struggle for what to cook because I coach a lot of women who are obviously mothers and it can be difficult cooking for the family healthy meals and HelloFresh will literally just give you it in the portions so you know exactly what the calories are per portion, what everyone should be having and you know that everyone's eating good fresh food. Anyways, this is how you make it. There is the chicken and pepper fajita bowl for just 574 calories and over 40 grams of protein. That was so quick and easy, literally in just under 20 minutes. And you can use code ELLIEHOAD60 for 60% off your first box and then 25% off your next eight boxes. Okay guys, so I've been wanting to cover this topic for a very long time because I feel like it's something that I've actually mastered in the last, probably the last couple of years. So I've been training for about seven years now. And at the beginning I dieted, I lost loads of fat, I got quite skinny and then I bulked and then I went back to dieting and then I maintained and now I'm kind of just at this place where I'm really happy I'm living life I'm maintaining a leanish physique obviously what's lean for me and doable for me and I am loving life and I want to share with you guys my tips and tricks on exactly how I've done that because I feel like there's so much information on how to lose fat how to get leaner but there's actually not a lot of information on how to live a normal life and maintain all of your hard work or say if 
if you're happy with how you look now just to kind of maintain that the most important thing when it comes to maintaining a lean physique is just to remember that the scales mean nothing they don't mean anything my weight probably varies between 64 to 66 kilos throughout the year just depending i typically weigh more in the winter and that is because i move less like <laughs> my average steps are not okay at the moment i would say they're around 5,000 a day and in the summer they are like i don't know 15k so it's a big difference and i think a lot of people underestimate the power of steps so yeah i typically weigh a lot more in winter and i definitely definitely comfy in the winter i definitely eat more food because i'm cold but if you are someone who's like looking at the scale and thinking oh my god i've gained a pound i've gained two pounds today i'm gaining fat absolutely not it takes weeks and months to gain a lot of fat and also there are just so many things that affect that number on the scale so really don't focus on it and just throw them away you do not meet someone in the street and go hi i'm ellie i'm 65 kilos it just doesn't really happen so just throw them away secondly it's really important to establish a routine for you and don't just look at my routine and try to do that because obviously i probably have a very different life to you i work for myself i can go to the gym whenever i can get up whenever i want like there's a lot of factors that goes into someone's routine but you have to remember it's important to establish one for you so as you saw this morning i got up at half six ish got ready i made my breakfast and now i'm like obviously ready for the day but i find that having a routine is so important when it comes to maintaining your relationship with food fitness because without that routine it's really hard to stick to anything so make sure you have a routine and stick to it and make a plan as well like know when you are going to the gym know when you're taking your rest days when you're eating what you're eating it just helps so much i always like to start my day in the right way so i have a high protein breakfast because i don't track my calories all year round i don't need to i've been doing it for a while and that's one of the benefits of tracking your calories it allows you to understand how much food and what your body needs so I don't actually do it all year round but whether I'm tracking or whether I'm not I eat pretty much the same and I always kind of make sure that I start my day with a high protein breakfast so this morning I had my baked oats which I am obsessed with and guys I have missed them so much I feel like my flat is the only place where I can make them taste nice and I don't know why sounds stupid but they just don't taste the same anywhere else so yeah I always start my day with a high protein breakfast the second thing I always do with my food in the day is I make sure that I have protein with every single meal. And there's a few reasons for that. And it's not just for the gains. It is because protein is going to keep you fuller for longer. It's the most satiating macronutrient. So if you're dieting or if you're trying to maintain your physique and you're getting hungry by, you know, 11 o'clock, have a look at your protein intake and just make sure that, you know, your breakfast has enough protein to keep you fuller. Because if it is just a high carb breakfast, something say like a bowl of cereal, if you have that eight o'clock you're gonna be hungry by at least half nine i guarantee it so just really make sure that you focus on that protein it obviously has benefits for muscle growth and recovery but it's also going to keep you nice and full guys look how good this looks it's literally so hot but i thought that we could sit here and just have a chat Okay, so something that I mention on my Instagram all the time is the 80-20 rule. And I get a few messages from you guys being like, what is the 80-20 rule? How do I do it? It basically means eating 80% good whole nutritious foods, stuff like this, and then 20% sweet treats, things that you kind of enjoy and crave, but obviously aren't that nutritious. I think anyone's diet should be made up of that because you've got to have your favorite things in order to live a normal life. And if you're constantly restricting yourself from your favorite foods, you're never ever ever going to be satisfied and you're always going to be craving them and if you restrict yourself that's when it leads to binging and binging and then restricting yourself is just a cycle that no one wants to be in so if you include all of your favorite foods and just live by the 80 20 rule you'll feel satisfied and you'll be able to maintain things because it will be sustainable having food freedom is one of the most important things when it comes to maintaining things because you need to be able to go out and enjoy yourself you need to be able to go out and have lovely meals with like your partner or your friends and it needs to be something that you can just do whereas if you don't have that food freedom you're never ever going to be able to do that and you're always going to be constantly worrying and constantly feeling like you can't eat something so live by the 80 20 rule and then you'll know when you go out for food or when you have 90 meals that it is absolutely okay to have those meals another thing that i've really lived by 
and I really preach this, is intuitive eating. And that's just eating to your hunger cues. So eating until you're nice and full and not absolutely stuffed. And I feel like it's something that we kind of learn and tracking your macros and your calories kind of teaches you maybe like your limits and also kind of teaches you what your body needs. I feel like a lot of people don't really understand like the full benefit of intuitive eating. Intuitive eating is such a great way to maintain your physique. There is actually a hunger scale and I actually saw this on someone's Instagram not that long ago but it's basically a scale of like 1 to 10 and it shows you of like where you should kind of be on the scale so like 1 is super super hungry like absolutely starving where you never ever want to be and 10 is completely stuffed like you know when you've had like a massive Domino's pizza all the sides all the dessert which yeah we probably do once in a while but it shows you like where you want to be on the scale and I think it said like between like 3 and 8 or 3 and 7 but that kind of says like where you need to be and it kind of just gives you a good gauge of you know where you should kind of be in terms of like your fullness and it's definitely something to live by because you know when you're like cooking like portions of pasta it's so easy to just eat loads of it a lot of people don't weigh out their pasta and for me even though I'm not constantly tracking my calories and my food I always weigh out things like pasta rice oats because it's so easy to have like double the amount that I would normally have so things like that definitely things that you should sort of just stick with with and just continue with your life because it is just so easy to just way overeat and then just feel absolutely stuffed and do you know what I hate the feeling of fullness I hate feeling stuffed because when I'm stuffed I feel like lethargic I can't do anything whereas if I've just had like a well-balanced meal I feel like I can actually move and do things in the day especially for lunch like no one wants to have a Domino's pizza for lunch and then be able to do stuff after like I'm just in a coma if I have that so it is really important to just make sure that you know you are listening to your body and you're listening to your hunger cues most importantly don't forget as well if you are a female and obviously we have periods when you're on your periods you will naturally be more hungry and that's okay like they say when you're on your period when you're coming up to your period we actually burn 200 calories more a day so again with your intuitive eating just remember if you're feeling hungrier on one day it might be because you're during your period maybe we're on your period maybe you were more active that day there's a lot that kind of goes into it so even though you're intuitive eating it doesn't mean that your calories are going to stay the same every single day because your body's demands are going to be different you might have gone on like a 20 mile hike you might have just laid on the sofa all day that's why it's important to kind of get in tune with your body and understand what your body needs on different days so kind of by understanding that and listening to your body is the best way to just maintain things because your body will naturally eat to its maintenance one thing i've really made sure that i've done over the past couple years is really focus on my activity so something that I think a lot of people underestimate is the power of steps and actually walking when I'm in Kent which is where I'm from I don't walk because you have to drive everywhere and I really really notice it myself my face gets puffy I feel a lot more bloated I'm actually not as hungry because I'm moving less whereas if I am active so when I'm in London I'm always active I'm always walking everywhere because I don't really drive in London and my body's demands are very different but the power of stepping let me tell you is really strong <laughs> if you can step more you will stay leaner and you will feel leaner most importantly and I do think it's kind of like a psychological thing because if I know I've been really active I also feel like I am leaner and I feel like better in myself do you get what I mean whereas if I've just laid on the sofa all day I just feel like a slug I genuinely feel like that so it's important to really focus on your activity even though you're not kind of dieting or anything like that it's good to kind of keep stepping it's good to you know stay active because it's going to make you feel better I also feel like it makes you make better food choices when you've been to the gym it kind of like sets you up to make good food choices for that day whereas if you don't go you kind of naturally just make not so good choices because you're like oh what's the point I haven't been to the gym so I don't know I feel like it just kind of sets your routine I don't know what you guys think but that is definitely how I kind of think with your step goal as well a lot of people say oh you have to hit 10k steps a day you have to be as active as this person blah 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 but in all honesty you don't need to hit 10k steps a day. You just need to do what's doable for you. So for me, 10k steps a day in the winter is not realistic. I'm not gonna hit 10k steps. I normally aim for around 8k in the winter because it's cold, it's dark in the mornings, it's dark in the evenings. There's not much of a time where I can actually get out and walk and that's okay. Like it's important to be realistic. And like I said, I do normally wait a little bit more in the winter anyway. So it's probably because of that as well. So set yourself a realistic amount of steps and don't listen to anyone else. Just set it based on like yourself. So if you've got an Apple watch or any kind of fitness watch, you can look on your phone and see your average 
for each daily steps. Maybe aim for like a thousand more than what you're currently doing. Do you know what I mean? Like increment it slowly so that it's easy to kind of build into your routine. And it's a little bit of a goal, but not too much of a reach that it's kind of disappointing if you don't get there. So it needs to be realistic for you. And just remember that, you know, some days you're going to be a little bit more active than others. And that's okay. Like if you can't be active, say Monday, Tuesday, because you're in the office, but you can be more active, say Wednesday to Sunday, then that's fine. Like you're being more active than you were Monday, Tuesday, and you're kind of like offsetting those days anyways. I always think if you've got an office job, try and like get up every sort of, I don't know, like every hour at least, even if it's just for like five minutes, just get moving, move around. When I was like working for someone else on my lunch break, I just used to go for a 30 minute walk. And I always used to do that at university as well, because it refreshes your mind. It gets your steps in, it gets your body moving, gets your digestive system moving. And it's just such a great way to kind of just stay active in the day if you are someone that has to sit down a lot. When you're also trying to maintain your physique, I'd really suggest if you're into the gym and you've worked hard and you've like built muscle and stuff, I'd really suggest following a program, even if you're not trying to lose fat or anything. It honestly helps so much to have a program to follow, even if you write it yourself. Like having something to aim towards in each session makes it so motivating. You'll be excited for your sessions, you'll work harder in your sessions. And obviously the harder you work in your sessions, the better your physique and the more you'll be able to maintain and maybe even build and sort of improve on it. So following a plan can help so much with that. And at the moment, I'm actually training just four days a week. And I found that that works the best for me because when I was aiming for five sessions a week, it was stressing me out like I am such a busy person and aiming for that fifth session was not good my fifth session was average and I just thought you know what there's no point in having a fifth session that's not not up to scratch because it's making me feel not great and it's a waste of time so I aim for four sessions I do two upper two lower obviously split them upper lower upper lower or lower upper or upper whatever and I also sometimes do like an additional cardio day just to kind of get my heart going I feel like it's good for you just to kind of move a bit more and that's what I found works really well for me because I feel satisfied I've got in my four sessions I've really pushed myself I've gotten a little bit of cardio and it's kind of the best routine for me obviously you might be completely different you might be able to go five times a week and that's great or maybe you can only go two or three times but you know again it has to be realistic for you but just make sure that whenever you do go to the gym that you're feeling yourself correctly before so you're having a simple carb meal something like a banana or rice cake fruit whatever snack a jack squares bar and then after you're having like a high carb high protein meal and that will just allow you to replenish your muscle glycogen stores and be refueled so it's important to kind of look at those things as well when it comes to maintaining your physique it's not as simple as you know just go to the gym walk a bit more like there is a little bit more to it the second class thing which i think is really important and a lot of people don't really think about when it comes to maintaining and sort of just saying is their sleep sleep is so important when it comes to making good food choices feeling your best to actually move and work out if you're someone that's getting four hours of sleep a night and you're staying up till like 12 one o'clock in the morning stop it stop right there you need to sort out your routine because being tired has such a big impact on our performance on our mental functioning on our day-to-day -day life on our food choices when we're tired we tend to reach for more carby snacks and obviously they're gonna be the sugary ones so if you've got 79 hours of sleep and you're covered and you're rested you're gonna be on form you're gonna be switched on and you're gonna make better food choices you're gonna feel more fueled you're not gonna reach for snacky things and you're gonna naturally move more in the day as well because you've got more energy so make sure you're getting seven to nine hours sleep and if you've got a fitness watch as well you can actually measure your sleep on there and you can see how many hours you're roughly getting although they say that with like the apple watches and stuff but i don't know about you my apple watch i have to charge it every night otherwise it dies which is so annoying because i can never mess with my sleep but i mean i guess you can just measure it from like when you go to sleep and when you wake up but i don't know if any of you guys also have that i just i don't really understand it like why have the sleep function if it doesn't have it all its battery like day and night but yeah maybe that's because my watch is a bit old this is the series three apple i think but um yeah sleep is a big one <laughs> so just remember that and lastly it is so important to get out of the i need to diet mindset a lot of people once they reach their goal if they find it really hard to kind of get out of that place where it's like i need to choose low calorie options i need to diet i need to do this i need to do that and it's so important to kind of like switch your focus from dieting to fueling yourself for normal life fueling yourself for good sessions fueling yourself to feel good to get strong Longer. like there's so many better things to focus on rather than trying to lose fat and kind of have to like 
like to switch that mindset to focus on something else because no one wants to feel like they're on a diet all the time it's just it's not enjoyable and it's not life so it's really important to focus on your mindset towards your food and your training and just make sure that you are focusing it in the right area plus when it comes to maintaining if you've kind of like taken all these things on board that i've said in the week and say if you're someone who normally has a really on track week and then less of an on track weekend that's absolutely okay because you would have made allowances for it in the week so if you would have you know stayed on track say like monday to friday but then saturday you've got a party it's fine because you were on track monday to friday you did your best you got your steps in you got your workouts in you had great workouts you prioritized your protein you had good nutritious meals you've done all these things so it's okay if you have a social event at the weekend and the most important thing after a social event is to not beat yourself up just get straight back to it the next day don't feel like you have to work out but just go on a walk get your energy expenditure up a little bit you know just enjoy it because life is for living and you don't want to constantly feel like you're having to restrict things and you're not enjoying things because you're constantly trying to maintain your goals like you just don't need to do that it's actually a lot easier to maintain your physique than it is to actually get there so just remember that but yeah guys this food is literally unreal Thank you so much for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know what you thought of it in the comment section below. I like doing chatty videos, so it'd be good to do like more. And if you have any topics that you want me to cover, then please let me know. I'd be happy to do it at any point. And yeah, I hope you guys have a good Sunday and I'll see you at the same time next week. Bye-bye.